Alright guys, so the nightmare scenario that we have all been warning about for months now seems to be coming into play, because last night, Iran predictably launched a retaliatory strike against Israel in response to their attack on an Iranian consulate inside of Syria. And so, it looks like they launched a barrage of primarily drones, maybe some ballistic missiles. Um, here from the IDF spokesperson, Rear Admiral Hagari, more than 200 drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles were fired from Iran. Most of the threats were intercepted outside of Israeli airspace. A very small number of the missiles hit Israeli territory with minor damages to a military base in southern Israel. And so, the fact that it seems like a vast majority of these got intercepted, I think, is part of the calculation in this strike that Iran launched, because Iran does not want an all-out war with Israel or with the United States. Israel, I think, has demonstrated over the last number of months that they absolutely do want a broader war with Iran. And so it seems like the kind of strike that Iran launched here at them was basically intended for Israel and the United States and other regional actors to intercept a vast majority of the missiles. It was sort of just a flex. It was a show of strength to say, okay, we just responded to your strike on our embassy or our consulate, and we're going to get to a statement here from Iran basically confirming that and saying, well, this is it, right? If you guys don't respond, if the U.S. doesn't respond to this and escalate, then we can just call this, you know, effectively a truce of sorts, right? So, just to show you a little bit of video of what this looked like here, and you can kind of hear the uh, the sirens in Israel going off in the background. This is uh, obviously by the Al-Aqsa Mosque um, in, in Jerusalem. And um, so you can see the interceptor missiles going off over there, uh, taking out, it looks like, again, a vast majority of those that were coming from Iran. Now, we also had this from a U.S. defense officials, official saying, in accordance with our ironclad commitment to Israel's security, U.S. forces in the region continue to shoot down Iranian-launched drones targeting Israel. Our forces remain postured to provide additional defensive support and to protect U.S. forces operating in the region. So this was my theory in the last video that I had um, when we had hadn't seen exactly what Iran's response was going to look like, I thought maybe because they said they hold the United States largely complicit with Israel's strike against their consulate, um, I thought that maybe they would attack U.S. forces in the region directly. That obviously didn't happen. Again, Iran, I think, wants to avoid a direct confrontation with the United States. And um, here you have the United States admitting basically that, yes, at this point, even though these were launched at Israel, our forces in the region, our military, is now directly involved in defending Israel or getting into a, a direct conflict with Iran. So this is the United States putting our foot directly in the middle of all of this. For what exactly? To support Benjamin Netanyahu's ongoing genocidal war on the people of Gaza to support Benjamin Netanyahu's escalatory strikes like the one against the consulate? Like, this is Joe Biden saying, well, we don't necessarily want you know, an escalation with Iran, but we are going to basically hand the keys over to Benjamin Netanyahu, who absolutely does want a war with Iran, to do whatever the fuck he wants, and we're going to stand by by him at the hip as he does so, right? So this is, this is Joe Biden potentially getting us into a spiral war with Iran just to support Israel, right? Here was the uh, other statement that I referenced from Iran their permanent mission to the United Nations, they say, conducted on the strength of Article 51 of the UN Charter pertaining to legitimate defense, Iran's military action was in response to the Zionist regime's aggression against our diplomatic premises in Damascus, that's the Iranian consulate there, the matter can be deemed concluded. The matter can be deemed concluded. That's the off-ramp that they're giving to Israel and the United States. They say, however, should the Israeli regime make another mistake, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime from which the U.S. must stay away. So again, they're giving an off-ramp here to Israel, and they're also telling the United States, stay the fuck out of this, or else you're going to get dragged into this as well. And they're saying, if Israel responds in any serious way, then we're going to respond tenfold, right? That's, that's the the situation that we have found ourselves in here, guys. So again, obviously, a lot of this comes down to how is the United States going to respond to this? How is Israel going to respond to this? How is the United States and Joe Biden, how are they going to respond to Israel's response? Are we just going to let them do whatever they want and massively escalate from here? Yet to be seen. But this was another thing here from Trita Parsi, uh, Iran basically drawing a new red line with Israel, saying, from now on, if Israel attacks Iranian interests, figures, and citizens anywhere, Iran will retaliate from Iranian soil. 
Okay, so they're effectively drawing a, a new red line to say if, if Israel goes out, if they strike another embassy, or if they even, it seems like, target any of our, you know, proxies in the region, they will consider that to be a strike against them and will respond, not via proxies, but straight from Iran. So, again, nightmare situation, probably couldn't get any more tense than we already are right now. We also had this here from Barack Ravid. Of course, during all of this, as Israel is, is promising to potentially, uh, you know, ramp up a response, uh, Netanyahu is escaping off to, to some, like, GOP donor, uh, you know, in the owner of Duty Free America's billionaire uh, bunker that is in uh, uh, Jerusalem. So Benjamin Netanyahu, as Israel is under fire from, you know, a, a response that, that came as a direct result from Israel escalating with Iran, of course, Benjamin Netanyahu runs off to some U.S. billionaire's fortified bunker in Israel. I mean, it's kind of a, a perfect encapsulation of the U.S.-Israel response or a relationship here. Now, we also had this, again, in terms of what Israel is going to do moving forward. According to Israel's Channel 12 News, senior Israeli officials said that there would be a significant and powerful response to the barrages from Iran and that it would be of unprecedented proportions Okay, the Israeli response will be decisive and clear. So here you have Israel saying, yeah, we're going to respond. And it seems like they're saying it's going to be an unprecedented response. So it looks like, again, Israel strikes an Iranian consulate building, takes out IRCG top commanders, okay, in a massive escalatory strike. Iran then gives them ample warning and says, basically, we don't really want an escalation, but we're going to have to respond in some way, shape, or form to you guys just brazenly violating international law and attacking our consulate. And so Iran launches a couple hundred drones or missiles, knowing that a vast majority of them are going to get intercepted. It looks like I haven't even seen any reports of deaths as a result of those strikes from Iran. And then in response to that, you are going to have Israel and the United States giving them backing, saying, oh, we were just brutally attacked by Iran out of nowhere. Of course, we have to launch a massive response. And so then Israel is going to escalate. So, I mean, really try to ask yourself, who is doing the escalation here? Who is being the aggressor in this situation? Because it's certainly not Iran, okay? Now, we also have this from Joe Biden. President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu that the U.S. will not join in a, a, an offensive counterstrike on Iran should Israel choose that road after Tehran's attack this weekend. U.S. officials are urging Israelis to be measured in any response. Yeah, that, that defines the current state of, of Israel, of the Israeli government, right? Measured and calculated in their response to anything. No, of course they're not. Of course they are going to try to escalate from here, right? I would be absolutely shocked if Israel uses any sort of off-ramp to try to get out of this, this spiral to war. Because again, Benjamin Netanyahu has every incentive in the world to keep his political career going, to keep himself potentially out of prison in Israel, to expand the war. That we, we've known this for months and months and months now. This shouldn't be any surprise to anybody, especially not fucking Joe Biden. And we have more reports coming out of how, how frustrated he is behind the scenes and how he... I, I saw one report that came out today that, oh, Biden is, is behind the scenes worried that Israel is trying to drag the U.S. into a war. It's like, no shit. What the fuck do you think they've been doing this whole time? But, I mean, again, he's saying we're not going to join the counteroffensive. So, presumably, I guess he's saying the U.S. military is not going to strike Iran as of right now. But, again, this doesn't even... That, that's not what this necessarily comes down to. What this really comes down to is how Israel responds. And so, that brings me to this, which is John Kirby on NBC News. Okay, just just the, today, I guess. And he basically is, is affirming what I was just telling you guys, that... Yeah, the United States doesn't say that they want a war with Iran, but Israel is its own sovereign country that the United States has no control over, and so they're going to respond however they want to respond. Not admitting the fact that how Israel responds will determine what the United States is going to do from there, and that, obviously, the United States has massive uh, uh, influence over Israel's foreign policy. But let's just listen to a little bit of this. What's the message? What was the broad message? It was, it was very clearly, you know... We stand with you in your self-defense. Uh, that was the main message that the president delivered to the prime minister. He congratulated the prime minister and the IDF for the extraordinary job they did knocking things out of the sky. Uh, but I won't go into more detail. Again, I just go back to, to what the president has said time and time again. We don't seek an escalation. We don't seek a wider war in the region. So did he warn Israel not to respond? Did he say take the win, as has been reported? I think the president was, uh, again, very clear uh, with Prime Minister Netanyahu about the success that they enjoyed last night and the impact that that success ought to have. Are you anticipating a counterattack? 
attack by Israel. And do you expect, has Israel given the United States any assurances that it will give the U.S. a warning, a heads up before it moves forward with any type of counterattack? Whether and how the Israelis respond is going to be up to them. I'm certainly not going to get ahead of their decision making. If Israel does. Okay. So there you go. I mean, again, this is the the paradox. This is the, uh, you know, the, the knots that they are tying themselves into in order to avoid the reality, right? You can't simultaneously say Joe Biden desperately wants to avoid an escalation towards a war with Iran, but also we don't know how Israel's going to respond. They're going to make their own, you know, policy decisions, and uh, we are going to stand by and, and be ready to be at their side uh, regardless of whatever happens, right? Our support for them is ironclad. So there's a contradiction there. You, you can't say you want to avert this, this wider war, but also we're going to let Israel continue to escalate towards a broader war and we are going to stand by them. It's a complete contradiction there. Now, I'll finish off with this. We have th this meeting, this impromptu meeting here of G7 leaders, right? We have, uh, you know, Maloney and Macron and Trudeau and Sunak and Biden and, and Kishida, and they're all getting together to exercise, to, to try to exert pressure on all parties to exercise restraint, uh, continue towards de-escalation, ending the crisis in Gaza, an immediate ceasefire, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and, I mean, listen, sure, if, if you just read this and, and take it at face value that these guys in this picture down here are all desperately trying to work towards an immediate ceasefire, it looks okay on paper, right? But in practice, again, the actual policy, especially of the United States, because some of these other countries have cut off weapons to Israel. Some of them have been more firm in, in trying to reign in Israel, but the big bad wolf in this situation is sitting right down here, and he has absolutely no interest in, in using any material leverage to, you know, restrain Israel. And so you can have your little meeting here with, with these G7 countries and urge restraint, but did you guys come out and urge restraint or condemn Israel's strike against the Iranian consulate? No, of course not. They, they said nothing about it. In fact, the United States and, and several other countries helped to block a resolution at the United Nations condemning that strike. So, you know, when, when it's Israel taking massive escalatory action, then it's absolutely nothing to say about it. But then when Iran responds to that escalation, oh, now suddenly we have to have this massive G7 impromptu meeting to condemn it and to say we, everybody needs to urge restraint. Maybe you should have told Israel to, or to, to use restraint, okay, months and months and months ago. Maybe we could have averted this entire situation. Now, the most ir ironic part about all of this now, apparently, according here to Barack Ravid, Israel is calling for an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council over the Iranian attack. I guess, presumably, to try to get UN nationals or, or UN Security Council approval to launch some sort of a retaliation. So suddenly now, after smearing the United Nations, smearing UNRWA as essentially being Hamas themselves, now suddenly Israel firmly believes in international law and they want the United Nations Security Council to come to their defense. I mean, it's just so deeply ironic given what we have seen over the last number of months. So, I mean, again, absolutely terrifying updates. I'm sure that over the next couple of days, we're going to have to cover this more and more and more as this heats up um, or even potentially cools down. Maybe I'm completely wrong about all of this and uh, Joe Biden will, will come in with, with a firm hand and put Netanyahu in his place and, and get an immediate ceasefire. But, um, you know, given what we have seen over the last number of months, I, I find that very hard to believe. And so we are just continuing and continuing to spiral towards an absolutely disastrous regional war. Politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying...